In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Isaac software to improve the calibration and accuracy of your PowerPod. PowerPod ships from the factory with what are called factory default settings. These are settings for a road bicycle. However, this customer is using his PowerPod on a cross bike, so there are several things that we need to change. I'm going to show you in this video how to do those changes. But let's first start by improving the settings on Isaac itself. Up in the top left corner, you'll notice that we see statistics with icons next to them. I'm going to change this to a more detailed form by right-clicking in the top left corner and selecting Advanced Stats. When I do that, you'll notice that the view changes and now I get very detailed information about power, bicycle speed, wind speed, slope, and more. And here, in fact, we can see the factory default profile settings where the assumed weight of bicycle and rider is 205 pounds, it's for a road bike, wheel diameter, and so on. I'll show you how to make changes to all of this. The first place to start is by looking at the graphs themselves. We see power in green in the top window. We see speed, bicycle speed being in white, and wind speed in blue in the second graph. The third graph shows heart rate. This customer has a heart rate strap that he's using with his power pod. Here's an elevation profile showing a basically level ride, climbing a big hill, and then climbing down to the starting elevation at the very end. Hill slope is shown in the bottom window, and we can see by looking at that the, in detail what the slope is at any point in the bicycle ride. One thing you'll notice that's missing from this particular presentation is cadence. There is no cadence data in his ride file. So now let's begin to take a look at the ride file and see where we might want to make some changes. The first thing I always look at is wind speed, the blue graph in the uh, second line here. In this particular case, wind speed, which is in blue, is consistently below bicycle speed, which is in white. To me, this is an indication that the wind sensor is miscalibrated and in fact it's not reading a proper amount of wind. I say that because in calm winds, the wind speed should always be approximately the same as the bicycle speed. So what I'm going to do is use an Isaac feature to correct the wind speed readings. Now ideally, to make a wind speed correction, you want to have what's called an out and back ride. That is, you would ride if from the beginning of the bicycle ride, out in distance, and then turn around and ride back. And if you were to really do this, you would see that the elevation profile would be symmetric around the turnaround point. In this particular case, we have a ride file that's about nine miles long, but we can see that the out portion of the ride, which is basically flat, is very different from the return portion of the ride, which climbs and descends a hill. So this is not an out and back ride and it's not ideal for the calibration purpose, but because we notice that the ending elevation is approximately the same as the starting elevation, I'm going to assume that this is a valid out and back ride. That's not a precise assumption, but it will help us in making the calibration corrections for this particular bicycle. So let's begin. We're going to go up to the top left corner to the Analyze menu item. We're going to select it and we're going to click the feature that says Check Calibration. When we do this, Isaac will begin a series of calculations and then will ask some questions regarding the ride. The first question is very important because for bicycle speed and wind speed to be comparable, there can be no drafting. We're going to assume that this rider did not draft anywhere in this bicycle ride. So we're going to say, no, the rider did not draft. Next, Isaac is going to say, did this ride end in the location where it started? It thinks it might have because the starting and ending elevations are almost the same. We know that it's not because of the profile in between, but for purposes of this, we're going to say yes. Once we do, a new window appears showing the check calibration conditions and the calibration changes. Wind scaling, which determines the sensitivity of the wind sensor, was 1.32 from the factory. It increases to 2.106. This basically will make wind speed greater relative to 
the byte speed in the ride file. We can see that power increases from 149.6 watts, which is what it was in the ride file, up to 165. And we can see that the significance of the change is fairly high because the needle is in the red zone. When I click the button here called Accept, what will happen is that Isaac will create a new profile with these change settings, and you're going to see that when I click the Accept button, power will go up, and watch wind speed. You'll find that it's now going to be approximately the same as bike speed. Here we go. Okay, I've clicked the button, and you saw the power curve shift up, and now we see that wind speed is, in fact, approximately the same as bike speed. Now, right here, we have a place where wind speed is much higher than bike speed. That would be a headwind. And here, the rider changes direction, and there's a tailwind because wind speed is less. In this section right here, we see the wind speed approximately the same as bike speed. On a calm day, that is the case. You'll recall that this rider is using a cross bike. Cross bikes have different wheel sizes, and of course they're a bit heavier than the normal road bike. So what we're going to do next is to adjust the profile for these differences in weight and wheel diameter. To do that, I'm going to go up to the top left menu again, and I'm going to select the Edit, Edit Profiles menu. Because we've already done a wind calibration, a new profile has been created with that corrected value. You might recall that we had a factor of 2.1 for the wind scaling, and if I click on the Advanced tab, there is the corrected profile. But let's take a look at the basic information. Isaac has a total weight of bike and rider of 205 pounds. In fact, this rider reports that his total weight with bike and rider is 213 pounds. So we need to update this number. I'm going to arbitrarily increase the body weight from 180 to 188. It doesn't make any difference if I do this here or in the bike weight. When I do this, watch the total weight. It increases to 213 pounds. So we're on our way. Now, road bikes use a standard 700 by 23C wheel, but this rider sent data saying that the circumference of his wheel is not 2096 millimeters, which is what it is for a road bike, but in fact is different. So I'm going to click on the drop down menu and I'm going to select measure. The number that he provided for wheel circumference is 2106, so I'm just simply going to type that in. So now we have changed the bike and rider weight and we've changed the wheel circumference. There's one other place where we need to change the bike and rider weight. I'm going to click on the advanced tab and here we're going to see factors for aerodynamics and friction. And notice that the uh, calibration weight for friction is 205. The total weight of the bike and rider is 213 so I'm going to type that number in. And when I do and I click I'm going to get a message saying that you are changing this value and the profile is going to be marked as user edited. That's fine. When I do, you're going to see, and I select this, you're going to see that the frictional value, which is the amount of friction that the power pot is measuring, is going to increase a little bit. It's going to go from 11.3 to 11.752. So now what we've done is we've updated the profile for bike and rider weight, and we've also updated it for bike speed. When I accept these changes, that information is stored in the profile. But you'll notice that there has been no change to any of the values recorded or reported in the file itself. That's because Isaac is still using the old profile, not the updated profile, with corrected bike and rider weight and wheel circumference. In order to incorporate those changes into what we observe in the data, we need to use another command in Isaac called Tools, Switch Profile After the Ride. I'm going to select this command, and when I do, Isaac will uh, show a new screen, and now here is our profile with slightly updated numbers for bike speed and weight. And notice that we're going to see a small increase in watts from 165 up to 170. I'm going to accept this change, and now we're going to see the screen shift slightly 
with these higher values. What we've done is we have updated the profile for the information that the rider has supplied for his power pod on his cross bike and we're getting much better data. But there's one more thing that we can do. We've now updated the rider's profile with the best information we have about him and his bicycle. But you'll recall that this rider was also using a direct force power meter on his bike. We're now going to add in that information and see if we can do anything with it. The file is over here with the direct force power meter information. It ends in .tcx. So let's add it in with the command file, merge GPS and power data. When we do, a pop-up window will appear telling me what kind of files are compatible. We have a TCX file, so we click the OK button. After we do, a screen will appear asking us to find that file on our computer. I'm going to find it here, and there it is, called activity.tcx. I open the file, and Isaac begins to merge that data into the process. In fact, Isaac identifies that the DFPM used by the customer is a Quartz Cinco. So we're going to read and sync that information. Now what you see here is both the before and after picture. And you can see that the Quartz data is significantly misaligned with the PowerPod data. But Isaac figures that out and moves it correctly so that it's together in time. And we're going to click the Accept button. When we do, another pop-up window appears showing the data that's going to be added from the uh, TCX file. We have in red the uh, core power data. We have speed data. Here's the wind speed data from PowerPod only. It looks like the cork is going to add cadence data. It has the same heart rate data. Elevation data is, is the same, but it's only different because of the starting elevation. And here's the slope data from PowerPod. And up in the upper right corner, we see that there's a GPS track or map. We're going to be getting the data off of the Garmin for the GPS ride from the customer. I'm going to click the Accept button, and when I do, the data is merged. And now we see cadence data in addition to the other data. The big change, though, is over here in the left, we have a new checkbox called View DFPM. This is a box that when I check it will show the power data from the quark and when I uncheck it the power data from the power pod. Right now the box is not checked so I'm going to be viewing the power pod data. Let me check the box and watch the power data. It's going to change a little bit. Quark Cinco, power pod. Cinco, power pod. Cinco, power pot. And if you look up here, the average power, which right now is from the power pot, is about 171 watts with the DFPM 178. So power pod is reading a little bit low. Why would that be? Well, in fact, the reason it's happening is because the rider is on a cross bike. And on a cross bike, you sit slightly higher up in the air than you do on a road bike. Now, the profile for the uh, ride right now is for a road bike and for the aerodynamic drag of a road bike. So what we're going to do is adjust the aerodynamic drag to account for the fact that the rider is on a cross bike. Aerodynamic drag is particularly important when you ride on the flats. On a hill, such as over here, the primary opposing force is from gravity, but along here, the primary opposing force on the flats is from wind. And in fact, the power pod is reading 212 watts in this section of flats, the DFPM 227. So it's pretty close, but it's a little low. Let's see if we can improve that. Because power pod is reading slightly low in this section, and because we know the rider's on a cross bike, this effectively means we need to increase the aerodynamic drag, or CDA, a little bit to see if we can dial in power pod even better for his cross bike. We're going to go back to the command edit, edit profiles, 
to pull up the profile that we currently have for his PowerPod. We're going to click on the Advanced tab, and here we see the factors for aerodynamic drag, or CDA. Right now, it's using the factory factor of 0.369, and that number is being held as a constant by PowerPod. What we want to do is to hold the value of wind scaling, which we've already corrected earlier in the ride, and now notice that CDA is no longer grayed out. I'm going to increase this number, and I'm going to have to guess on what it is, but I'm going to guess that it's about 0.41. That's a number based on experience, and if I'm wrong, I can simply go back and change it again. So here I go, I'm going to change the number, and when I do, watch the aerodynamic factor increase a little bit. This is the number used in PowerPod calculations. It increases to 0.864, I accept it. Now remember, in order to actually see this reflected in the ride file, I have to use the command tools, switch profile after the ride, and I'm going to do that, and now I'm going to increase the uh, uh, number to reflect this higher aerodynamic aerodynamic drag. Average watts for the entire ride go up a little bit as we would expect. Let's see what it does in this particular section. Well, right now we have power pod watts of 224 in this section and DFPM watts of 227. So I'm going to increase the factor a little bit more to see if I can dial it in even better. Edit, edit profiles, I go back, here is the advanced tab, I'm going to switch it from 0.41 to 0.42. This is going to increase things just a tiny little bit, we'll see if this is magic. Go back, tools, switch profile after the ride, now it's going to be using the aerodynamic drag of 0.42, watts go up a couple of watts on average, let's see what it does to the section here. The power pod is now 226.8, the DFPM 227.4. We have absolutely dialed in this power pod for a cross bike with the DFPM. In fact, not only have we dialed it in for this particular section, but I'm now going to click on the main window to get the entire ride stats, and we'll see that for this condition, the DFPM on average is reading 178 watts for the entire ride, a maximum of 604, power pod 176, and 625. These two devices are extremely close. This power pod is very well dialed in. The only remaining step we have now is to get that profile information back into the power pod. Now that we have power pod's profile dialed in, the only remaining step is to transfer it into the power pod. To do this, I'll connect PowerPod with the USB cable to Isaac. When the connection is made, you'll find that the icon around the USB indicator turns green in the Isaac window. Now all I have to do is select Edit, Edit Profiles, and here's the profile that we have upgraded with all of these changes. And the final step is down in the bottom of the uh, profile window. Click the button that says Send to Device. All of that information is now in the power pod, and on any subsequent ride with my cross bike, this will have the best dialed in information.